Brontosaurus. Stegosaurus. Triceratops. One hundred and fifty million years ago, these awe-inspiring creatures walked the wild west of America. However, it was less than one hundred fifty years ago that scientists began to discover the vast treasure trove of fossils lying in the badlands of the western USA. Then it was with the exploration of the American West that uh, dinosaur remains became discovered. Pretty much each year, more and more fossil bones are exposed. Two men in particular began to take advantage of these excavated fossils and made a name for themselves in history. Their names were Edward Drinker Cope and Othniel Charles Marsh. The term to describe the science of studying prehistoric life with fossils, paleontology, was created just nine years before the birth of Marsh. Cope, who had put together an elasmosaurus uh, skeleton and um, apparently placed the head of the plesiosaur where the tail should be. Seeing an animal that has no modern analog, there's nothing alive today that looks like an elasmosaur, it has the same structure to their vertebra as a lazosaur, it can kind of be understood why he made the mistake. And Marsh delighted in making light of that, in discovering it and laughing at Cope about it. But that really, really infuriated Cope because he had such a huge ego that he couldn't take anybody correcting him. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. This Elasmosaurus incident in 1869 was the beginning of Cope and Marsh's infamous hatred, continuing to escalate as their reputations grew. The completion of the Transcontinental Railroad later that year set off the Great Dinosaur Rush, fueling the beginnings of Cope and Marsh's rivalry, which would last for decades to come. Each made innumerable fossil discoveries in the West, as the rivalry became what is now known as the Bone Wars. There's some specimens that Cope and Marsh found that are in boxes today that are still in museums that people are currently re-describing now. So they've had a huge impact on paleontology. For the good and also for the bad, they were so avid about their hatred for one another that they would destroy the sites before they left, so the other person couldn't get the fossils that they missed. They gained international recognition, as Charles Darwin wrote Dr. Marsh a personal thank you letter about Marsh's support of the theory of natural selection. I mean, you could look at mammals and, and be impressed, but when you look at dinosaurs, you have to be impressed. And with the discoveries that Cope and Marsh made, which include things like uh, Patasaurus and Allosaurus and Stegosaurus, they're some of the most iconistic dinosaurs, and that had to have gotten people to realize that there was a life in the past prior to humans. I, I think that uh, Darwin's theory of evolution, as he presented it in 1859, gained rapid acceptance. Uh, the concept that Earth has a past and that that past didn't include humans was certainly uh, aided by these wonderful discoveries of Cope and Marsh. The controversial idea that life did evolve over millions of years gained much more acceptance because of the weird and wild specimens unearthed by Cope and Marsh's driven rivalry. Although the Bone Wars escalated violently and completely ruined the two scientists, they truly revolutionized the perspective of dinosaurs and created the science of paleontology as we know it today. After Cope and Marsh, the media got a hold of dinosaurs who saw these things that people never even could have dreamed existed. And that just captivated everybody's attention. And that's when paleontology really started to kick off. So they ignited the flame for paleontology, if you would, and carried on through today. So without Cope and Marsh, now we probably wouldn't have a strong paleontology presence in the world.